But here, it basically, it, the whole show hinged on the main event. And here we are for the WWE title, Logan Paul and Roman Reigns. The guy is going for the WWE championship at a stadium show in his third ever match in front of people. And by all rights and laws of gravity, this thing should have either been kept short or it should have stunk or at the very least it, you know, should have been passable. And fucking Logan Paul is a goddamn star that they found and they didn't even know it two years ago. What has somebody said on Twitter recently, they were doing an interview, said that, I can't remember, was, was it Hay probably Heyman, pitched Logan Paul to Vince like two or three years ago and Vince had never heard of him. And I can't blame him. I don't know that I had either. But um, Logan Paul, he's, he's in great shape. He's got the size, he's got the personality, the charisma. He's obviously done the training. He's taken this seriously. His basics are better than 90% of the AEW roster in just the training that he's had. But the balance, the springboards, he's there for complicated stuff. He's selling and, and understands why he's selling. And the third match. So, I've you know, that right there was enough to get over with me, but Roman Reigns led this great also. And you could see a couple times where he saw when Logan Paul might have needed to breathe or just think about something for a second. He slowed it down and kept the course going. No kendo sticks, no chairs, no tables. The match made sense. They were keeping Logan Paul alive. And it it worked, and he hung with it. Did a better buckshot lariat than old hangnail. And then, you know, the Superman punches back and forth were getting pops. And then they had to do, and I know I guess this is the viral moment or the Shane McMahon moment or whatever, but then Logan Paul gets his phone and he's taking video and he goes to the top rope and Roman Reigns is on the announce desk and he splashes Roman Reigns off the top rope through the announce desk at ringside. You know what? It's the main event, and this is what people came to see, so let them do it there if they're going to. If this was a once-in-a-while thing in a main event on a big show, that's what that kind of shit was designed for. It's just we now have to see it, you know, especially every week on free TV from the kids across the street. But anyway, so boom, they go through the desk and then here come the Usos and they get in a fight with Logan Paul's ringside entourage who apparently have not shared Logan Paul's affinity for wrestling training and I, they couldn't stand up to fall down. And it was funny. It was like trying to work with complete marks. They couldn't figure it out. But then music plays, and here comes Jake Paul, Logan Paul's brother, because Ezekiel Paul was busy. And Jake fights the Usos in the ring, and his shit looked lousy. I don't know if, if lightning's going to strike twice with both these Paul boys. But then, after all that goddamn subsides a second logan paul rolls roman reigns into the ring hits a huge frog splash holy shit got all the way up in the rafters on that one got a two count and then music plays again i'm like oh for fuck's sake now and here comes solo but he gets a music and entrance and solo and jake get into it and they're separated by officials and Logan Paul dives onto all the heels. And at this point, I thought they've completely lost the match. They, they lost the thread. They, it was too long, too much distraction, interruption, etc. Maybe they didn't trust it at the start. And they said, we've got to have all the gaga at the finish just to make sure that everybody's on the edge of their seat. I think they should have trusted the match. Because 
it was better than it, it could have been expected to be or had any real right to be. But when they put all this Gaga in at the end with the separate music entrances and the peripheral people, blah, 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 they... Roman and, and Logan had them. And they they lost that, I think. They lost the fucking grip on it. it the splash through the desk up until that point was perfect. And then with the interference, everybody running down, the music's, the whole nine, yeah, they, it went to shit. But then finally, after Logan's big dive and they had lost the match, then Logan gets back in the ring and Roman Reigns hits Superman punch and the spear one, two, three. I, I, you know, after that splash through the desk, if they had had the partisans for both men just come out and try to get each of their guy up and put them in the fucking ring so that they could at least be back together in the ring and the people would know the match is continuing and then they could get a little skirmish out on the outside and let the two guys finish their business in the ring. But it just, it distracted and it was, it was too long. What'd you think? I really liked it. I think Logan Paul is fucking fantastic. They should throw whatever amount of money it takes to sign him up and get him for more uh, once he's healed up. I don't even care if it upsets the locker room. Sign him up. Sign his brother yeah. up. You didn't see much of his brother. Sign his brother up too. Trust me. Just sign them both up. Well, now, wait a minute now. Are you saying that you think that Jake can jump right up in there and, and be as good a worker as Logan? No, and I think he'd be a very different <laughs> worker. I don't think they're the same guy. They're very different. So I think you have the ability to have Logan wrestle like Logan and Jake be a different kind of worker, something that suits him more. But sign them both. But Jake Paul, or uh, Logan Paul, I mean, when you think about it, is he win Rookie of the Year? Well... Jesus Christ, but then, well, what year is this? What McAfee do last? McAfee but wrestled then, before this year. Okay, then you have the problem is, if you're going to ask that question, the real rookie of the year should be a Braun Breaker who's actually full-time and who is going to, uh, can't miss prospect barring injury for being the big star in the business. Or somebody along those lines where they are not only legitimately a rookie, I think, but are doing this as a profession. We, the guy, you know, I Logan think I, Paul, I, I was, Logan I Paul has a main event wrestler schedule. AEW or WWE? Well, who wrestles a lot? Not the main eventers, other than well, Moxley. But, but but rookie of the year is different than main eventer of the year. And yes, Logan Paul, if he had wrestled the same schedule, or if he'd it was a full-time wrestler. He might very well still be the rookie of the year, but is it fair because he's had three matches now that have both been set up with quality opponents and a lot of work has gone into them, and that's all we've seen. We didn't see, you know, like a typical rookie that you'd see in the goddamn rec center in Shively somewhere in front of a small crowd and trying things out in real time and in front of witnesses on the fly. And so it, it's two different kinds of rookies. But what do you think about what I said about signing them? What would oh, you do? Yeah, yes. Well, but can they afford him? Well, they can afford anything they want. Hey, but... listen, in this day and age, if it takes a whole lot of money throwing it at someone like that, and you know, they're going to put everything into it and then get you a lot of publicity and they'll be good at it. And they can work well with you. Again, forget about upsetting the locker room. Who cares at this point? Is it worth throwing a ton of money at someone who's proven it already like that? Well, depending on what the exact measurement of a ton is, because I don't, this guy, you know, makes a ridiculous amount of money doing his boxing and all of his un, other shit. But if it was in any way reasonable that you could get anywhere close to a return on him, counting in all of the publicity and, and et cetera, yeah, because. <laughs> Where you find a guy like that that already has a built-in audience and takes this seriously and doesn't want to just come in and jack off. Like Shaquille, put me through a table, man. You know, whatever. So, yes, I think they should make every effort to get this fucking guy, but whether he'll do it on a long-term or more full-time basis is up in the air. Depends how creative they can be. 
Well, I think that it actually the best thing is for them to be with their contract. For the, well, I'm not talking about yes. I'm talking about for them to be as willing to spend as much money as possible and let Logan do his creative because it seems like he's got himself over better than they get their fucking guys under contract over these days. All right. Well, that was WWE Crown Jewel, and of course, if you put money on Logan Paul, if you thought I'm going to pick him against Roman Reigns, I think he will kick out seven times. He may not be doing well today. And if you think this transition sucks, just wait. There's more. Just wait. There's even worse transitions coming. Brian's under the weather. He's got that brain fog today. But I'll tell you what, folks, if you, if you're fogged in financially and you want to figure out a way to make some money, boy, I'll tell you what, our friends at Prize Picks will help you out because they are willing to give you as much as you give them. I will explain Prize Picks is, of course, our friends that run the daily fantasy sports where you make entries on player projections. And, for example, so let's say Cooper Cup, whoever the fuck he may be, scores more than 0.5 touchdowns, and you made a prediction, or a projection, or a prediction would be a projection. It all depends on your diction. If you said he would, then you win money. So, folks, you're not having to compete against other people here. Brian, you know that can get tricky because some people cheat. It's just you versus the projections available. And you pick two to five players and then decide whether they're going to do their thing more or less than their prize picks projection. And you can win up to 10 times your money on any entry. And you can make a projection On almost anything in any sport, NFL, NBA, MLB, NHL, PGA, college football, men's college basketball, women's college basketball, soccer, WNBA, eSports, NASCAR, tennis, MMA, boxing, disc golf, disc golf, disc golf, Euro basketball, cricket, cockfighting, and even more. No cockfighting. Not in most states. Not in any state. Entries can be made in 60 seconds or less. It's that easy, and you can make safe and fast withdrawals. You don't even have to be armed to make a withdrawal. Currently, they're operational at prize picks in over 30 states and Canada. Those fewer than 20 states must be still upset about the cockfighting thing. But right now, unbelievable! if you download the prize picks app, or you go to prizepicks.com to sign up and play the daily fantasy sports, well, first-time users can get a 100% instant deposit match up to $100 by using the promo code JCE. If you deposit $100, they give you $100. If you deposit $50, they give you $50. You see how this is working out here. So don't forget to enter the promo code JCE at your sign-up. For an instant deposit match worth up to $100, and then you play the projections, and these people fall on their faces as you predict, and you win money. It's that easy. Prize picks. But don't bet on any of the roosters. Once again, prize picks.